Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about um, deployment models and what deployment model is going to meet our needs the best. And I'll tell you, this decision should always, like all others, should start with risk management. What am I protecting and what's it worth? What are the threats and vulnerabilities? How much am I willing to pay to mitigate those threats and how effective will the control I put in place be? Okay, so if we're looking at our primary purpose for the organization, then the other piece is, of course, we're going to provide security to be in compliance with the business's goals and objectives. So if we determine that our primary goal for moving to the cloud is cost savings, well then the public cloud is going to be the least expensive of all the options. But the public cloud is where we have that multi-tenancy, right? We have that cloud service provider, uh, resource pooling amongst all of their customers, and again, you know, we're looking at sharing that physical environment. So you know, not knowing who those other tenants may be, once again, we have to rely very heavily on the service level agreements. So you look at Azure, AWS, these are public cloud structures. The greatest drawback is multi-tenancy. The greatest benefit is cost. Now, if you want to solve the problem with multi-tenancy, um, we can move into the private cloud. Now, the private cloud is essentially just going to be um, our organization. So when we talk about private cloud, we don't have to deal with multi-tenancy. This may be something we store on our organization. We can manage it, really. The whole idea here being is that these cloud services are unique to our organization. So if you're looking at government, if you're looking at sensitive information that needs to be protected, it may be that a private cloud is going to be the best bet. It's more expensive. It's dedicated solely to you and your organization, but you can have customization to exactly your needs. Um, financial institutions often utilize private clouds um, when we have these business critical or sensitive, uh, these types of data that are particularly sensitive. Now, that's going to be more costly. Also, I'm likely not going to have as much scalability options as I would with public cloud. Because the private cloud, I'm going to have a set of resources that are designated to me. So sometimes organizations are going to work with private cloud and yet still be able to move to the public cloud in the event of uh, a, a big increase. So, for instance, we refer to that as a hybrid cloud. So, you have an element of resources that are devoted to your organization, and yet when we have that burst, and sometimes you will hear cloud bursting, again, those periods of very high volume, then we may be able to use the resources of the public cloud. Or we may host data, private cloud, and then use public cloud applications for access. Or whatever that looks like, the hybrid cloud is going to be a combination of public and private. Okay. Now, the community cloud. The element that makes this the community cloud, and the community cloud means that we have um, cloud services, we still have a multi-tenant environment, but the other tenants generally are in the same industry, the same type of business, or have the same regulatory compliance. This is more expensive than public cloud, but it's not as expensive as private cloud. So, for instance, if you look at cloud service providers that are going to have uh, house healthcare information, once again, we're looking at HIPAA requirements. So, what if a cloud service provider specializes in HIPAA compliance and then markets to healthcare facilities, healthcare providers, hospitals, and so on? So that certainly makes sense as well. So when we talk about deployment models, these are our choices. We have public cloud, private cloud, community cloud, and hybrid. Now, um, this is just a high-level overview. This isn't everything, every benefit, every, you know, instance in which you would implement this, but this does give you some ideas. So again, that public cloud, 
general public use externally hosted service provider. A private cloud might be internally deployed, might be externally deployed and managed. It really depends on what our, you know, what our drive is. We said community cloud, same industry or same sort of legal requirements. You might see um, universities utilize community clouds as well. All right, and then hybrid cloud, again, combination of public and private that um, is going to be able to utilize the private access or the lack of multi-tenancy for the majority of their services, but then when it's necessary, you're going to be able to scale up, so to speak. So if you hear that term cloud bursting, you want to kind of associate that with hybrid cloud. 